Hello everyone, the clip you're about to hear is from an exclusive Patreon episode of Horror Queers. If you'd like to hear the full episode, just visit patreon.com backslash horrorqueers and subscribe today. Now, because we use some real fucking naughty language, we are considered an explicit podcast and thus will not show up in Patreon search engine. So you have to use the link, or if you're tech savvy, just Google Horror Queers Patreon and we'll pop right up. Subscribing at the $5 level will get you two full-length bonus episodes on new horror films, two minisodes, and a newsletter each month. Don't have $5? That's okay. We also have a $3 level that will get you the monthly newsletter and two minisodes each month. And without further ado, here is your exclusive Patreon clip. God, I loved it. I send you a copy. Bam! Bitch went down. But I get where you're coming from, too, because it, I actually disagree. I actually think that the remake or the readaptation rushes through things more quickly than the original film does. Maybe it's just because I had just watched the 89 version and then mm-hmm. watching this one. I was like, OK, so it's really doing a lot of the same stuff. And I just got bored. Yeah. Well, okay. because I felt like I knew exactly what was happening. And OK, so people have indicated that they want us to have this conversation. I think we're going to do a separate minisode on the idea of remakes in general. Yeah. But I do think that you can look at this film in two different perspectives. One as its own standalone film. And whether or not that succeeds, and then one as a remake of this 89 film, or the book, I guess. Mm -hmm. And does it succeed if you already know what's going to happen? And I would actually say that it doesn't succeed in both, because as a remake, it's doing almost everything exactly the same like a lot of the beats are just beat by beat like i don't know why they remade it and then as an original product it feels boring like the characters are shallow they're not interesting it's so paint by numbers like one dimensional like he's a doctor who's looking to reconnect with his family she's a ptsd survivor because she accidentally killed her sister they have kids story Okay, so... Sorry, I gave you a lot there. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, 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 you did. I agree with you, like, somewhat, but then I... Hey, so I saw this uh, a month ago at South by Southwest at the world premiere. Everyone's there. And I didn't want to review it because I didn't have this connection with the story, whereas our lovely, you know, co-worker Megan Navarro did. She gives it a four and a half out of five for Bloody Disgusting. Oh, my God, no. I know. <laughs> well, no. Okay, so, so here's my thing. I'm watching this movie, and the first two acts, I was like, I mean... <sighs> It's fine. It's basically the same fucking movie. It's by the numbers, like, going through the remake motions, doing the exact same shit, but it's pretty. Like, the aesthetic of this movie reminded me of the aesthetic of the Evil Dead remake, but I I think that's a much better movie (laughs) than this one is. Yeah, 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 yeah. But then the third act happens. We'll go into the third act later um, in more detail, obviously. But the third act is what made me like this movie. It woke me up. I was like, oh, good. Like, (laughs) here's something new. And I realize that's controversial because, obviously, if you're going to see this movie and you love the story, you want to see the same stuff. Right. Especially when I rewatched the 89 version a couple days ago, I was like, wow, I forgot how fucking similar and exactly the same the first two acts of the new one is to the 89 Mm -hmm. version. Yeah. But I do disagree with you when it comes to caring about the characters. And I'm only going to say this about one. And it's Rachel, the wife. I like Amy Simons a lot, so maybe this is why I'm coming from that. But I actually thought Rachel is much more well-developed in this movie than she was in the 89 film. She's definitely less of a bitch. As much <laughs> as I love Tashi Yar, she comes off as a stone cold bitch. Is it a Star Trek so. reference? It is, yes. Okay. I knew that she was, uh, she quit, or she was quote unquote fired or quit Star Trek. I don't know. There was like, I Googled this rumor because I heard about it and I was like, what? Um, but apparently she hated Star Trek, so. Yeah, there's other stuff, but. Regardless, like, it's yeah. one of the the other role that she's known for. Anyway, so on that level, I disagree with you. I love the change the film makes. I appreciated the attempt at misdirection about what was going to happen. There were two times in this movie. One, obviously, when Ellie died. Mm-hmm. The second is uh, whenever Judd is about to get his ankle slashed. And they do that shot from under the bed because, again, you know that's where it's coming from. But, but then they still fucking do it. Don't well, give me an Achilles tendon cut then. If you're going to do that misdirect, give me something else completely different. Well, and here's the thing. Both of those things, including the Achilles tendon on the stairwell, the, the stairwell, the stairwell, and 
also Ellie dying, were spoiled in the second trailer for the movie. Now, you and I have discussed marketing before, and I'm not holding that against the movie, but it definitely hampered yeah. the reaction for me. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially the Ellie stuff. That seems like a very odd choice to me. Like, I don't know why they felt compelled to release that, especially when the film goes out of its way to misdirect you because yeah. you think Gage is going to be the one who dies. Yeah. And instead it's Ellie. And you're like, okay, that's a good bait and switch. But then for the trailer to then reveal that, well, what the fuck was the point? It's stupid. <laughs> Get in, losers. This is the Lady Killers, a feminine rage podcast. I'm Jen. I'm Sammy. I'm Rocco. And I'm May. Our podcast is a tribute to the female identifying killers in horror and more. Each episode will feature us, your Supreme Court of female murderers, discussing our favorite lady killers from your Julias and Jennifers to your Carries and Christines. We'll tell her story, decide if it's good for her horror, and answer the most important question of all. Would we die for her? Join us on Thursdays as we pull on our sweaters, snatch our ice picks, sharpen our scissors, and honor the lady killers who live on the silver screen. No boys were harmed in the making of this podcast. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm Shelby Scott, the host of Scare You to Sleep, a podcast where I tell you spooky bedtime stories full of creepy sound effects and music that is soothing yet unsettling to help immerse you into a world of horror. This is a show for those of us who have realized horror can be a strange but relaxing escape from reality. Speaking of escapes, sometimes I lead you through guided nightmares, like a guided meditation, but instead of flowery meadows, I take you on a journey through your own personal nightmare. So come get lost in the terror with me. Listen to Scare You to Sleep wherever you listen to podcasts or find us online at bloody.fm. Sweet screams.